Hey, hey developers, so today we are looking at a really neat library. It's called Pina, like Pina Colada. It's an automatically typed modular and lightweight but experimental store for Vue based on the Composition API. So if you've been following this channel, I've been doing a lot of Vue videos lately, a lot of videos on Vue 3, and you may notice that there is a cool new way of doing things using the Composition API. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an alternative of using Vue-X and using Pina as your store with the Composition API. We're gonna do a really simple example, the counter example, it's back. But we're gonna show you how you can kind of talk to a Vue-X or in this case, a Pina store instead of a Vue-X store and how it works. Hey, and if you guys like this video, make sure you click that like button and subscribe and let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Hey developers, I wanna thank our sponsor today, Springboard. Now Springboard is an online bootcamp that offers flexible mentor-led courses in data science, UI UX, machine learning, and software engineering. In the software engineering career track, you'll learn the skills and gain the experience employers are looking for. Throughout the nine month online course, you'll work one-on-one -on -one with an expert software engineering mentor to two full stack capstone projects to showcase your skills to employers. You'll also work one-on-one -on -one with a personal career coach to create a successful job search strategy, build your network in tech, craft a full stack development resume and LinkedIn, prepare with mock behavioral and technical interviews and more. And the best part, if you don't get hired in a software engineering role within six months of graduating, you'll receive a full tuition refund. So make sure you check out Springboard. The link is in the description. Make sure you click on that link in the description. Thanks. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start from the beginning here. So I'm going to walk you through creating an app using uh, Vue 3. Essentially, we're gonna use the latest release candidate of Vue 3, and then we're gonna install Pina, we're gonna actually install the next branch of Pina so we can have Vue 3 support, which is really cool. And then we're going to show you how to set that up. So let's get started. Now I have VS Code open and running here in an empty, a brand new empty VS Code. And to start, I already have Vue CLI installed. If you don't know how to install that, you can do an npm install tag g at Vue slash CLI. But otherwise, let's uh, you do Vue create. I'm gonna call it Pina example yt and then it's going to ask me a few questions and i'm going to do manually select features you can see with the latest version as of this recording 4.5.4 you can actually do a u3 preview which is awesome so i'm manually select features i'm going to choose typescript because we are going to use typescript and don't worry we're going to use just a little bit of typescript i'll show you how that works we're going to create routes we're not going to do vuex is we're going to use pina we're going to choose the 3.x preview we're not gonna use the class style syntax. We're gonna just hit enter here, router, no error detection, lint on save, dedicate files, and hit no there. And this will just take a moment and we'll have a new view three app in a second. Okay, cool. So it went ahead and installed our new app. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to install Pina. And remember, if you get confused, uh, it says in the official documentation what to do. You can click on this next branch. I'll make sure I include a link to this documentation. But essentially you do npm install Pina at next. And if you do npm view Pina, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, you can look at the GitHub and basically some notes about it. And it tells you the distribution tags and you can do latest or next. And next will show you the alpha. And the way you do that was with that at sign afterwards. So if I do npm install Pina at next, uh, then it'll install like this next alpha version, which supports Vue 3, which is the one we want to use. So this just take a moment. Cool. So it went ahead and installed for us. Now I need to uh, I need to change my YouTube Visual Studio Code folder. So I'm going to do that real quickly. I'm gonna... Cool. So now I'm in the right folder and I'd like to do just a, a little cleanup. I always like to delete this hello world. Um, let me try that again. Delete, move to recycle. And then in the home component, I delete this and the view logo and the import. And you can see it's already TypeScript ready. And I'll open the terminal and I'm actually using NVM. I'll just make sure I'm in version 12, NVM use V12. Cool, now uh, I'm going to uh, run it. So NPM run serve and we'll see if it works. Just right out of the box. And I guess I'll put something here Hello world. I'm going pretty fast here. If this is too fast, make sure you pause it. 
you could see it and I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open up my local host 8080 cool there's a hello world nothing much there so now we have Pinya installed so let's see if we can create a really simple counter and we can see how you would interact with a Pinya uh, Pinya store instead of using Vuex so I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm called store and then in store I'm gonna create a new file I'm going to call it counter, and since we're using TypeScript, I'm going to do .ts. Although, uh, you know, you don't have to use TypeScript if you're following along, but I'm just doing it just to show you that that's one of the cool things it does for you. So one thing we need to do is we need to import this create store module from Pinya, and then I'm going to create an interface called, I don't know, main counter, and this will be defining how I want to use my counter. Once again, if you're not using TypeScript, just go ahead and skip this section. Uh, just this 30 seconds here, but I'm just gonna have one thing, it's a number. And I just like to have that because then I can keep my types for my state in one place and it'll make sense. Obviously, if this was a huge project, we might have multiple stores. You don't have namespace modules like you do in Vuex and Pinya, but you can just create as many stores as you want and you create IDs, like unique IDs with each one of them, and then you can import them in and I'll show you how that works. So we're gonna export const, I'm gonna call this use, counter store and that's going to be create store which we pulled from Pinya and then it's basically at this point just an object and I'll make sure I mess, don't mess that up and then I can put an ID which I'm just going to call it counter store it doesn't really matter I'll just call it counter and then uh, I then I can add a few things now if you're familiar with Vuex you know there's state and then there's getters and mutate mutations and actions but really the only thing we care about in Pinya is the state and actions and getters so in the state and they have something called they do have a way to do mutations through something called patch which we'll take a look at in a second but so for the state we're going to actually set it because we have this main counter that means that this is going to be the type we set for our state. And now we can basically return an object here. And the object we're going to return is just going to have counter. And you can already see I have this error here. And my VS Code is already picking up that uh, counter is missing in type. So I'm going to put in counter zero. Cool. So now we have a state, just a really basic counter. Oops, for those of you who are closely following along, I actually made a mistake here. You need to. Make sure you do npm install uh, Pinya like I did before. I did in the wrong folder uh, next. So I'll just make sure I install that real quickly. Cool. And I'm going to run npm run serve again. And this time if I check my package JSON, I have dev dependencies Pinya, so that is correct. Or my dependencies Pinya, now I don't get an error right here. So just quick FYI, if you're following along, that was me just going a little fast. And I had another folder with a, a different name. So I'm going to create a couple of actions. First, I want an action to increment counter. And that increment counter is going to, the way you access the state is you can actually just go this.state.counter. And I'll just do plus plus because that'll work. And then I'm going to add another one called add value, which takes a value. Uh, and then it adds it to it. So I'll do this.state.counter plus equal value. And once again, I couldn't, you know, make sure I put this as type number. So I have a little bit of type dependency in here and that it adds it to the counter. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to add in a getter too. So I'll just do getters. And by the way, here's already Visual Studio Code telling me what I should do here. And I'm just going to have one called get counter just so I have it. And this actually has something called state inside of it. You don't use have to use this.state. It actually, one of the parameters to get the counters has the state inside of it. And then I can return state.counter. So that's our store. So it's really simple. All we have is our state, our increment counter, add value, and get counter. So that's all we're going to have there. So let's see how we would add this in to our home view. Uh, it should be pretty easy. Uh, what we want to do is uh, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to add in a few things here. I want to add in, we're gonna, not going to use any CSS. So I'm going to use. A button here. Well, first uh, we're gonna have to show the counter. So let's let's do a couple things. First, I want a data object. 
And this data object is going to have um, a value here. So I'm going to put val zero. And I'm going to have an input. So I want a way to someone to, to be able to enter their own value inside here and then have it be incremented into our counter. So I'm going to put vmodel equals val. And I'll do type here, just to be consistent, I'll put number. I'm going to have a button here that says increment. And I'll put this above here, I think. And I'm just going to do um, breaks here, just really s simple. And I'm going to have a button here that says uh, increment by value. And then I'm going to add a reset too. So and I'm going to put a button here that says reset. So I'll just have three buttons, one that just increments by one, one increments by a value, and one resets. And so now we just need to set that up. So remember, since we're using the composition API, we use this setup function like this. And now we can actually pull information in to here. So first, I want to actually import in our use counter store from, and I'm do slash store slash counter. So now we should be able to use this in here. And I'm going to do const counter. Well, I'll call it, yeah, I'll call it counter. And then I'll pull that into my use counter store. And now to use the composition API, we have to return things. So let's, let's do this first. Let's, um, let's create a function called reset. And this reset, all it's going to do is going to, um, it's going to do this counter. And there's one, this new thing in Pena called patch. So if you look inside here, there's patch, and it's a method that allows you to apply multiple changes at the same time. So we can, we don't have to, this is probably not the best practice, but if we wanted to inside an individual component, we can do mutations um, instead of doing it inside the store. I would probably prefer to do it in the store, but it's good to know you could do it. So I can do counter here. And so I'm gonna do counter and I have, uh, let's see here, I'm, let me see if I can spell right, function. I'm going to call it reset. And now I'm going to use counter here. And this use counter store. Oops, I have an error here. Yep, I have an R there. So let's try that. Now, if I do counter, now I have full VS code autocomplete because we're using TypeScript, which is cool. So I can see here, here's state, but here's patch. And the way you patch works, it takes an object. And now I can set whatever I want. So I can put counter to zero right here. And now uh, I can return. Obviously, I'll need to return something. I can return reset. Maybe that's the first thing I want to have it return. But we want a way to increment. So let's let's do an increment here. So we have counter here. I'm going to call it increment. And now I can put counter. And then I have something called increment counter here. And also, I need the counter itself, so I can do counter. And remember, we have a actual uh, through counter. We have the getters, so we have a getter, and we don't actually have to put dot getter in. We could just do get counter here. And now we should be able to show a few things. So I'm gonna put in an H three here and call this counter, and this will be counter. And this button here. I'm going to do the at sign, so we're going to incre we're going to basically do a click event, and we're going to do increment, which is yep, which is what I called it. So let's see if this works. I'm going to go here. I'm refreshing it. Okay, here is my counter zero. Don't worry about this. This is just built-in routing in here. If I click increment, cool. So my counter is incrementing. And now if I look at inspect and look at view. Um, I do have the inspector here for my apps. And right now I believe this is not working because I'm using a beta version of my view dev tools. But if I wasn't, I would be able to use it uh, in here. But it's since it's not, I'm not going to be able to, to show you that. So let me let me refresh it. Oh, I do get an e error here. Cannot read property of view dev tools. That's just a, a dev tools issue. Don't worry about that. But it does work if I incre increment it here which is cool. Now, 
Uh, let's see if we can get this working. I want to be able to put a value in here and have it incremented by a whole value. And actually, let's try to see if reset works first. I'm going to do a click event, reset. Now if I increment, which again, don't worry about this error, and I hit reset, it works, perfect. So let's do increment by value. So uh, we can do this a couple of ways. One way, let's call it add value. And we can do counter. Remember we have this drop down here. We have add value. And now we can just add a click event to here called uh, click add value 1L. Let's save it. Let's see if we did this right. We increment. Oops, we have an error. So I'm going to see here on my console what my error is. OK, there we go. Oops, increment by value. Oh, one thing we have to do is we have to pass in. So we have this val in here. So we're going to pass in the val. Increment two. And look like it, right now it's just concatenating the string together. So we'll need to take a look here. I'm going to do plus value here. And that'll convert it into a, a number. So now if I do two here, Yep, it's incrementing correctly. If I do increment here, and then if I hit reset, it's perfect. So yeah, there we go. We've been able to use Pinya in our app. We have TypeScript available. It's pretty simple. I mean, this use counter store is a really simple way of, of doing it. I created my own patch to, to reset it all. I certainly could have done that inside Pinya itself, but yeah, everything is, yeah, everything's working. Oh, one gotcha too here is let's say you wanted to have this reset. Let's say we were creating a different function that, I don't know, it's called double. And this one, and I wanted to actually get the counter and return like the double of the counter. I can do counter dot get value counter here, but it's actually a computed property of sorts. So you actually have to do value afterwards. And now if I do um, double here, and I add double up here, I don't know, h5 double counter value. And I call this double. And I save it. Refresh. Oops, uh, let me do one thing here. I could actually times this by two. And um, if you do, if I can leave it here double, but then I want to add in double parentheses here. There we go. Let's see if that works. So I reset it, increment. Yeah, you can see the value is always doubled over here. So it always has the doubled value inside here. So just keep in mind, just do dot value if you're trying to actually access this, this, this getter right here. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. For those of you who stayed all the way to the end, I thank you and uh, take care. Thanks.